you work in a secret SCP prison, and you're given a strange list of rules to follow. Do you A. Burn the list of rules and just do things your way. B. Follow the rules exactly and hope you don't die. Or C. Leave the prison before something horrible happens. Here's the story. Leaked email from grichie.gov.uk to SC all staff. All right, lads, pay attention because this is the last time you're going to be told. Inmate number 514233 is not a novelty. She is a permanent resident of this facility. I know you all thought it was funny that we have a harmless looking female inmate in a men's prison, but we're the only building with the facilities required to safely hold her. I do not give a shit how stupid you find the new protocols. You will follow them or you will end up like Gary. These aren't guidelines. These aren't suggestions. Consider the new protocols, commandments carved in stone by Moses himself. I'm not even close to joking. If for some crazy reason you're still unsure of why we're doing all this, the governor will let you access her file. By all means, go and reread it so you can be reminded of exactly what she did to deserve this. Failure to adhere to any of the new rules is grounds for immediate termination of employment and potential criminal prosecution. <sighs> this is not a threat. The next person that makes a mess of this, I, I swear, I will personally ensure that they are completely unemployable for the rest of their miserable life. The rules are posted in every guard station in solitary, and they're going to be posted on her cell door. No more excuses. I'm attaching the updated rules to this email. Memorize them and follow them as if your life depends on it. Because from this moment forth, it damn well does. No more screw ups. P.S. Gary's funeral is on Monday afternoon. The governor wants to have a short remembrance service on Tuesday with the chaplain. Attendance is optional. If it were up to me, I'd make you all go and rewatch the tape of what she did to him. Grant Ritchie, Chief Officer. Email to the staff. Protocols relating to inmate 514233. Number 1. The inmate is to be held in cell 7 of the new solitary confinement block. If for any reason 514233 is required to go to another cell, she should be placed into a cell denoted by a prime number. No exceptions. Number 2. Under no circumstances are any prisoners to be held in the cells to either side or opposite her cell. If there's a shortage of room in the solitary confinement block, prisoners deemed as low risk can be moved to C block. If at any time a prisoner is discovered in a cell adjacent to 514233, they are to be placed in full body restraints and moved to treatment room 4. Number 3. Inmate number 514233 is to be kept in her cell 24 hours a day unless a request is made by Dr. Roberts and Chaplain Reese to move her to a treatment room. Such requests must be made in person. Written or telephone requests are to be reported to the governor's office immediately. Furthermore, both the doctor and chaplain must be present at the time of request. If either comes alone to request her movement to a treatment area, ask them to wait for approval and immediately report to the governor. Number 4. When being moved to a treatment area, inmate 514233 is to be accompanied by Dr. Roberts, Chaplain Reese, and no less than four armed guards. The escorting guards must only use ammunition provided by Chaplain Reese, and ideally, should be active practitioners of one of the Abrahamic religions. Number 5. Prior to exiting her cell, 514233 must be fitted with a pair of silver coated cuffs. These will be provided by the chaplain. If she refuses to put on the cuffs, activate the in cell sprinkler system and wait patiently. She'll comply soon enough. Additionally, 
If the reason for her movement is deemed sufficiently urgent and she remains non-compliant, the song What a Friend We Have in Jesus can be played over the loudspeaker. This will severely agitate her, but she'll put the cuffs on much more quickly. Turn the song off immediately after she has the cuffs on so as not to cause unnecessary behavioral issues. Number 6. Absolutely no living or freshly killed organic material larger than bacteria is allowed into 514233 cell while she is in it. Meals must consist of meat, vegetables, fruit that have been dead for one week at minimum and should not have been frozen. This inmate is never to be offered nuts or seeds. Meals are to be pushed under her door using a silver tipped pole. Number 7. If she ever expresses a wish to kill herself, she is to be encouraged to do so. She can be provided with no more than six feet of rope to assist in this. No attempts to prevent 514233 from harming herself are to be made. She is impervious to significant harm and cannot die. Number 8. She is absolutely under no circumstances to be provided with books, paper, or any form of writing implement. Inmate number 514233 may attempt to write on her cell walls using her own blood and or fecal matter. If you discover her doing this, do not attempt to read the writing. Activate the in-cell sprinkler system and require assistance from the specialist decontamination crew, the SDC. Number 9. Cleaning of 514233 cell can only occur when she is in a treatment area. The sprinkler system must be used for no less than 10 minutes prior to anyone entering the cell. SDC will carry out the cleaning. No one else is to enter the cell under any circumstances. Number 10. This inmate will attempt to persuade you to release her. She will tell you that one of your loved ones is in danger and that she can help. She can be extremely convincing, but you must remember that she's lying. You have no loved ones. You were handpicked for this assignment due to the fact you have no living family and are not married and have no children. Nevertheless, 514233 will attempt to place fictitious memories in your head. If she tries this, withdraw immediately and report to the chaplain's office. Update. Due to the circumstances surrounding 514233's recent escape attempt, additional measures have had to be implemented to ensure the safety of all staff and prisoners at HMP redacted. Number 11. Verbal communication with 514233 is henceforth forbidden under any circumstances. Industrial grade ear protection will be provided for all guards. An additional soundproofing was installed in her cell during Saturday evening's treatment session. Ear protection must be worn by all staff during all interactions with the prisoner. Number 12. By royal decree of Her Majesty Elizabeth II, all matters relating to 514233 are exempt from investigation by the Independent Monitoring Board, the IMB. Anyone claiming to be from IMB inquiring about 514233 is to be immediately detained. Any resistance should be met with reasonable force. Detainees should be placed in a solitary confinement room which adheres to the protocols previously outlined. Number 13. In the event that 514233 successfully escapes her cell, emergency lockdown procedure 616 is to be enacted. Do not attempt to save colleagues or prisoners. Follow emergency lockdown procedure 616 to the letter. Any severely wounded individuals, staff or inmates who you encounter during 616 should be granted a merciful execution. Their remains should be turned over to SDC for disposal. If after one hour from the commencement of ELP 616, inmate 514233 has not been subdued, 
SDC will be authorized to purge the entire block. Do not let it come to that. Terminate her, collect her remains, and return them to her cell. Email from S. O. Grady at redacted.gov.uk to S. C. All Staff. You've been tasked with an incredibly difficult job. Her Majesty and the Archbishop have faith that we can do this. I've handpicked you all because I believe you're up to the task. With that being said, I need you all to understand that you cannot continue to allow her appearance to cloud your judgment. Inmate number 514233 is not a little girl, no matter how much she resembles one. I too had my reservations, but I believe the tape of what she did to Gary McMichael speaks for itself. We all must recognize her for what she truly is, no matter how horrible that truth is. I will personally check in with the team as often as I can. Do not hesitate to come to me for additional support. The Crown is extending us every courtesy in this endeavor, and I intend for us to take full advantage of it. As always, you have my eternal gratitude. May God bless and protect each and every one of you. Stay safe. Yours sincerely, Sean K. O'Grady, Governor. Email from K. Doherty at redacted.gov.uk to all staff. Hello, team. Following a successful trial at HMP, the National Offenders Management Service, NOMS, are instituting a new program for offender management, specifically the housing of certain inmates previously deemed too difficult or dangerous to be considered for holding in a standard maximum security site. These prisoners must have previously been held in specialist psychiatric facilities, but the new initiative wants to integrate them into the general prison system. To prevent any further rumors circulating, I can now confirm that this is the reason for the refurbishment of the solitary confinement block. Solitary will now have its own dedicated team, selected from the existing staff roster. Members of this team will be handpicked by myself based on several suitability metrics. Additionally, a new janitorial team, which will be known as the Specialist Decontamination Crew SDC, is being brought in to cover all janitorial tasks in the solitary block. Individuals selected for reassignment to the new solitary team will be informed within the next week. Until then, keep up the good work. Incidents continue to decline weekly. Keep this up and we're going to have the lowest incident rate in the whole of HMPS. Yours sincerely, Karen Doherty, Governor. Email from K Doherty at redacted.gov.uk to SC All Staff. Hello, SC team. By now, I hope you've all had sufficient time to familiarize yourself with the new solitary block. David informed me that there's been some frustration and boredom among the SC team. Consider it a testament to the sterling work carried out by the faculty in this establishment, yourselves included. With that being said, I'm pleased to announce that I've had confirmation from Tower that inmate 00327 will be transferring to your block on Monday. By now, preparation of his cell should have been completed and SDC have finished setting up their offices. David will brief you in full on the transfer procedure. For now, I've attached the specific protocols that will need to be implemented. Copies of these are to be posted in all guard stations throughout the solitary block, and on the advice of Governor O'Grady from HMP, a copy should be placed on inmate number 00327's cell door. It is imperative that these protocols are strictly adhered to. You've all been briefed on the incident at HMP. I do not want anything like that happening here. Be smart. Follow the rules. Be safe. Yours sincerely, Karen Doherty, Governor. Email to all staff. Protocols relating to inmate number 00327. Number 1. The inmate is to be housed in cell 9 of the solitary confinement block, never in any other cell. Inmate 00327 
is not to be held in any room that has access to a window or an outside ventilation system. A special air filtration system has been installed in cell 9. SDC will carry out regular maintenance on this system to ensure it is in working order. Number 2. The prisoner is to be provided with a vegan diet. Inmate number 00327 is never to be offered meat, eggs, or fresh milk. Some processed foods containing dairy, such as chocolate and American-style cheese, are allowed, as is the use of powdered creamer in tea and coffee. The prisoner's unique properties will affect all animal matter. This renders any animal-based foodstuff he comes into contact with inedible, even to him. Number 3. A choice of reading materials are to be offered daily. He particularly enjoys medical and scientific journals, autobiographies, classical philosophy, and celebrity gossip magazines. He is also to be provided with a small notepad and pencil. Inmate 00327 will often make notes in the medical science journals. Due to his unique knowledge of infectious diseases, any journals found with such notes should be passed directly to the governor for analysis. Under no circumstances is the prisoner to be provided with any religious materials. Under no circumstances is he to be provided with reading material containing images of vultures, condors, corvus, or any other carrion bird. Number 4. The prisoner is permitted to have written correspondence with inmate number 00001 once a month. Due to the length of both their incarcerations, as well as certain shared interest, inmate 00327 and 00001 have built up a friendship of sorts. Allowing them to continue this relationship has been shown to reduce agitation and behavioral issues in both prisoners. All outgoing letters should be approved by Dr. Lancaster prior to delivery. Any letter written in a substance other than standard pencil graphite or in any language other than English are to be immediately destroyed. Incoming letters will be approved by Tower prior to receipt. Staff should never, under any circumstances, attempt to read a letter received from inmate 00001. Inmate 00327 is never to be allowed correspondence with any other inmate from the tower facility. Number 5. Staff members and inmates with severe or chronic health conditions must never be allowed into the same block as inmate 00327. Individuals with severe health conditions who are in close proximity to this prisoner frequently suffer from sudden, drastic worsening of said conditions. Manageable conditions have been seen to become terminal in as little as 30 minutes of exposure to 00327's sphere of influence. Solitary confinement staff team were selected partly due to their excellent health. All team members will receive a full physical exam on a monthly basis to ensure compliance with this protocol. Number 6. Inmate number 00327 is never to come in contact with animals under any circumstances. Even something as innocuous as an ant, housefly, or a spider coming into contact with this prisoner could have catastrophic consequences. The airtight pressure sealed door, coupled with the air filtration system, will prevent any pest from entering his cell during normal operations. SDC will sweep the block prior to any opening of the inmate's cell door, including mealtimes. Number 7. Under no circumstances allow your exposed skin to touch any part of the prisoner's body. During all interactions with 00327, staff should wear their specially assigned PPE. In instances where he is to be moved from his cell to the treatment area, the prisoner will wear a custom-fitted restraint suit. Due to his generally amiable nature, he is usually compliant in putting on his restraints prior to exiting his cell. If an instance arises where the prisoner's movement is deemed urgent and he is non-compliant, a CD of Raven Calls is to be played over the loudspeaker. This should be stopped once he dons his restraint suit. If at any time a staff member or inmate comes into skin-to-skin -skin contact with 00327, 
That individual is to be immediately detained and placed inside a windowless, sunproofed cell in solitary block. Number 8. If by any means a staff member or inmate dies while inside HMP redacted, their remains are to be collected by SDC immediately for disposal. Inmate 00327 has been shown to possess the ability to sense or predict an individual's approaching death, even if he has never seen this person and is on the opposite end of the facility at the time. The precise range of the prisoner's sphere of influence is unknown and likely impossible to accurately measure. For this reason, every death on HMP grounds is to be treated as a potential reanimation incident. Emergency Lockdown Procedure 1347 should be enacted in the event of any potential reanimation incident. ELP 1347 is not to be lifted until SDC deems the facility secure. Number 9. Pregnant women should never be permitted to enter any facility housing 00327. See Incident Report TRK9919 and the attached video file if you require further clarification on the reasoning for this protocol. Note from Tower Command Never become complacent around 00327. Despite his friendly demeanor, make no mistake, he is now the most dangerous individual to ever set foot inside your facility. He will do everything within his power to escape. He bears the scars of uncountable failed executions, and every one of them is warranted. Were he possible to kill, it would be deserved a hundred times over. Governor Doherty has all of the files. Every one of his atrocities is painstakingly detailed in them. You are all expected to commit them to memory. Tower has kept him incarcerated for over two centuries. We have given you all the tools required to hold him for many more. Do not fail us. May God bless and protect you all. Email from D. Keen to K. Doherty Hi, Karen. Two quick questions. What the hell's the deal with these SDC guys? Have you spoken to them? Do they just sit around all day in those weird hazmat suits? They're creeping out the team. Can I throw anyone using the word necromancy into a hole? Other than that, 00327 seems to have settled in fine. Old bastard could talk the ears off a donkey. At least the boys aren't bored anymore. They've had the protocols drilled into them, though. So I'm confident we're going to make a success of this. Speak soon. David Keene, Solitary Confinement, Team Leader. Email from K. Doherty to D. Keene. Hi, David. Glad to hear things are going well down there. Everything upstairs is going to shit. It's like he's put the fear into everyone just by being here. I should call Tower to see if there's anything they haven't told us. All of the SDC staff came from Tower. I'm not sure what's going on there or why they're shipping the freak show out to the rest of us. The Crown Office just told us this was happening. No questions, no answers. We're not really meant to be discussing this anyway. Tower gets really pissy if you talk about him too much. It may be safer all around if you and I discuss your concerns about these matters in person from now on. Call me when you get off shift. Karen Doherty, Governor. Email from F. McNally to S.C. All Staff. Your new resident will be arriving from Tower later this morning. I expect you all to have memorized the brief. I want this transition to go smoothly. The other prisons housing relocated high-dependency inmates have been struggling with their assignments. I expect you to do better than they have. Leslie should have posted the new protocols downstairs by now. Do not phone me this morning. I'll be golfing with the Lord Provost. SDC are set up. Go to them with any problems till I get back. I'll be down this afternoon to get a look at the little lady for myself. Till then, do your jobs. I want noms to be kissing our asses at the next inspection. Frank McNally, Governor.
Email to all staff. Protocols relating to inmate number 00001. Number 1. Inmate 1 is to be held in the specially constructed cell 2 of the solitary confinement block. All metal components are constructed of iron, and iron threads are used to strengthen the concrete of her cell. Extensive soundproofing measures have also been included in the construction of this cell. In instances where prisoner 1's cell requires cleaning, she is to don full body restraints and be transferred directly from her cell to a specially constructed mobile iron cage. At least two guards armed with portable thermic lances should be present to ensure compliance. SDC will carry out the cleaning process. Number 2. She requires a live diet. One rabbit is to be provided to her daily. Any captured vermin may be offered to her as a reward for compliance. Number 3. Inmate number 1 is permitted written correspondence with inmate 00327 once per month. Letters written by one are to be collected by SDC and sent to Tower for approval before delivery. Under no circumstances is one allowed any form of contact with any former Tower inmate other than 00327. Number 4. With the exception of SDC Tower operatives, Absolutely no male staff are permitted to enter the solitary confinement block. Although capable of affecting females with her abilities, Prisoner 1's known victims were exclusively male. She sees the presence of male staff as a challenge, and this increases the likelihood of escape attempts. Number 5. Real-time surveillance of her cell must be carried out 24-7. Discrete audio-visual recording devices were placed into her cell during construction. She is to be watched at all times. Inmate 1 may seem to disappear from time to time. If this occurs, switch the camera mode to image intensification mode. She's invisible to infrared cameras. It is likely that she has taken an animal form in order to hide from view. Her preferred form is a black cat but she's been known to take the form of a rat, a large dog, a horned goat, and a hooded crow. Most often, one will appear as a strikingly beautiful red-haired woman, sometimes with extensive Pictish tattoos. Her true form is more animalistic in nature. Number 6. All audio recordings are to be sent to Tower daily at 6 a.m. for analysis. Inmate 1 generally speaks Scots Gaelic. She is also fluent in English, Latin, Norwegian, and Pictish. Staff are to be trained to recognize these languages. If one begins to speak a language they do not recognize, staff are to immediately mute the live audio feed. While not as dangerous as hearing it spoken in person, the language is still capable of creating adverse psychological effects, such as severe anxiety, and paranoia to those exposed to it via recording equipment. Inmate 1 is one of a handful of known living creatures to still speak this language. Number 7. She is never to be exposed to sunlight. This includes indirect exposure. It will allow her to enter an ethereal form, making imprisonment impossible. All previous successful escape attempts were possible because she was exposed to sunlight. For this reason, coupled with her other transformational abilities, one is never to be held in any area with access to windows or doors which can access the outside of the facility. Number 8. One is never to be held in the same facility as inmate Zero. Tower recently discovered that Zero's presence in their main facility amplifies the abilities of all high-dependency inmates. This was especially true for Prisoner 1. It is theorized that 1 is the biological offspring of Zero. However, since obtaining a DNA sample from Zero is impossible, this cannot be confirmed. For this reason, HMP Redacted was chosen to hold Prisoner 1 as this is the farthest establishment from Tower's main facility. Number 9. 
In the event that one becomes loose in the facility, staff must immediately enact Emergency Lockdown Procedure 1669 to ensure ELP 1669 success. All doors and windows leading into the solitary confinement block have been fitted with iron handles, hinges, and fixings. While not enough to stop inmate one entirely, they will sufficiently slow her down so that SDC can intercept her with thermal weaponry. Number 10. If a successful method of termination is discovered, one is to be executed immediately. Tower believes that Zero knows the methods required to terminate all high dependency inmates. Tower is committed to extracting this information and is employing all means necessary in pursuit of this goal. Email from Tower to F. McNally at redacted.gov.uk Governor McNally, transfer of inmate one will commence in one hour. A Tower command operative will accompany the prisoner. You are expected to greet them in your office to finalize the handover and take possession of her file. Inmate number one is our longest tenured prisoner. Her file is incredibly extensive and much of it requires translation. Complete preparation and await our arrival. May God bless and protect you. Email from F. McNally at redacted.gov.uk to SC all staff. Why the hell didn't anyone phone me? I'll be back in 25 minutes, and I'm coming down to see the prisoner. I don't care who Tower or the Crown Office think they are. No one tells me where I'm allowed to go in my prison. Frank McNally, Governor. Email from Tower Command at redacted.gov.uk to Tower, all staff. Inmate 91188 has transferred successfully to HMP Redacted, and the project is now complete. You've all done your country a great service. While you will never receive the public respect and admiration that you deserve, know that Her Majesty and all of the Tower Command staff recognize your unparalleled dedication and professionalism. The recent events in this facility those which prompted the relocation project could not have been averted and were no fault of any member of the HDPU. Were it possible to keep all of the high dependency prisoners here, know that we would have done so. The information we received from the Vatican when we agreed to hold inmate Zero on their behalf made no mention of the effects she would have on the other high dependency prisoners. Whether this was a gross oversight or a deliberate attempt to sabotage this facility is still unclear. The possibility that they have allowed themselves to become compromised by her is not impossible. Command Operative Blake has been dispatched to Vatican City, so we should have an answer within the next 24 hours. Zero will be remaining in Tower's main facility. Nowhere else could possibly hold her. No other team could be trusted. Any information gathered by Blake will be disseminated to Tower staff at the soonest possible opportunity. May God bless and protect us all. Email to all staff. Protocols relating to inmate zero. Number one, inmate zero is to remain in her cell indefinitely. The cell has been reinforced to better withstand heat. Zero is not to be removed from her cell under any circumstances. Number two, Zero must wear a bridal at all times. Zero is not permitted to speak. The psychological damage caused from exposure to the language of paradise is both catastrophic and irreversible. Allowing Zero to speak at any time puts the entire tower facility at risk. In the unlikely event that Zero's bridal becomes damaged, Emergency Lockdown Procedure 5225 should be enacted. EOP 5225 is the one of two instances under which staff are permitted to enter Zero's cell. Number 3. Zero's cell should be maintained at 80 degrees Celsius under normal circumstances. If Zero becomes highly agitated, 
The temperature should be increased to a maximum of 1250 degrees Celsius. If Zero manages to remove her bridle, the temperature should be increased to 3422 degrees in accordance with ELP 5225. Such extreme temperatures will, unfortunately, not cause Zero long term harm. Number 4. Zero is not to be fed. Zero's imprisonment is not simply the purpose of containment and study. As per our agreement with the Vatican, Tower will continue Zero's ongoing punishment. Number 5. Zero is to assist in locating unusual individuals. Zero is responsible for the existence of all high dependency prisoners, either indirectly as a result of her historical actions or directly through parentage. Zero is to be encouraged to write the names. So far, we've been able to extract around two names per week of these unusual individuals. Zero is rarely compliant in this and will claim in writing that she does not know their names. This is a lie. Zero knows the names of all things. Once Zero has given us a name voluntary, Inmate number 01487 will locate them, and Tower or an affiliate organization will apprehend. Number 6. If Zero becomes pregnant, staff must immediately enact Emergency Lockdown Procedure 661705. Zero's pregnancies are completely spontaneous, making prediction impossible. During ELP 661705, all offspring are to be immediately removed from Zero's cell and destroyed. Those who cannot be destroyed are to be placed into an extreme pressure containment unit and buried at the redacted oceanic facility. Note from Command In the past, several Tower staff have experienced significant distress while carrying out ELP 661705. You must remember that all of her offspring are abominations, regardless of how human they appear. Number 7. Affiliate organizations are never to be allowed access to Zero. There is a reason she was entrusted to us and not them. In agreement with the Vatican, our Norwegian affiliates are permitted access to her files so they may prepare a backup facility in the event that Tower becomes compromised. Number 8. In the event that Zero escapes her cell, the catastrophic event procedure should be enacted. Following completion of CEP, Vatican operatives will take custody of Zero and transfer her to the Norwegian facility. Number 9. If Zero births a non-humanoid offspring, the apocalyptic event procedure should be enacted. Should AEP ever be enacted, all staff are advised to pray for forgiveness. Email from towercommand at redacted.gov.uk to tower all staff. Due to the actions of Governor McNally, now deceased, at HMP Redacted, inmate 00001 has escaped. All staff are to be on maximum alert. I do not need to explain to you the consequences if she were to enter this facility. May God bless and protect us all. Email from Tower Automated at redacted.gov.uk to tower all staff. Emergency lockdown procedure 661705 has been enacted. May God bless and protect us all. Email from tower command at redacted.gov.uk to tower all staff. All staff are to read Operative Blake's report immediately. All SDC members guarding voluntary inmates are being dispatched to the Vatican immediately. All documents relating to Zero's pregnancies are to be collected and brought to command immediately. May God bless and protect us all. 
from Tower Automated at redacted.gov.uk to Tower All Staff. Catastrophic event procedure has been enacted. Extraction is not an option. May God bless and have mercy upon us all.